guys, my name is Nako Nakatsuka. I'm a fourth year chemistry PhD student at UCLA, and today I'll be helping you guys out by going over some general chemistry concepts. And good luck with the course. So I'll start out with fatty acids. So fatty acids all have a carboxylic acid with a very long unbranched hydrocarbon chain. So this is a very common fatty acid structure. And most have an even number of carbons because two carbons are added at a time during the biosynthesis of fatty acids. And so acid-base catalyzed hydrolysis yields the fatty acids. And 12 to 20 carbons for the chain is the most common. 18 carbons in particular is one of the most biologically important fatty acids, and it's steric acid. Steric acid can be used as surfactants and also softening agent, but they have very important biological applications. And so the main biological importance of fatty acids is that they serve as precursors to other lipids which you'll see in a little bit. And they're categorized by either having double bonds or not being double bonds. So remember we talked about this in the review of organic chemistry. If it has a double bond, it's called unsaturated. And if it does not have a double bond, it's called saturated. And so here are some examples of different fatty acid structures. And so in this case, we have 14 carbons, 16 for palmitic acid, 18 for steric acid. And as you can see, they're all increasing with two carbons. And so unsaturated fatty acids can be called monounsaturated if it only contains one carbon-carbon double bond, and they're called polyunsaturated if they contain more than one double bond. And also when looking at the double bond, the cis conformation is more common than trans. So if you remember learning about cis and trans isomers, cis is when you have two atoms, let's say chlorine molecules, on the same side of the double bond if you cut it in half. On the other hand, trans is when you have them on opposite sides, like so. So if you look at these diagrams right here, in this case, these are all cis, right? Because the long group are on the same side of the double bond. And so cis is more common than trans, as you can see from all of these examples. And also remember the terminology monounsaturated and polyunsaturated. So oleic acid is monounsaturated, but as soon as you go into linoleic acid, it is polyunsaturated because now you have two double bonds. And then the rest of these guys are all polyunsaturated. So now moving on to waxes. So waxes are long chain hydrocarbons and they primarily exist as esters. So you have a long chain hydrocarbon with an ester group that is not a triacylglyceride, which we'll see in a second. And they could also involve alcohols, aldehyde, and ketone groups. So this part represents the ester which is a COC. And then in this case, we have a carbonyl group. And since there's two R groups that are bound, this is a ketone. Most natural waxes are esters derived from a fatty acid and a long chain alcohol. And the main biological function of waxes is being a water barrier. So, for example, leaves and fruits have these waxy coatings to protect from dehydration and also small predators. And so waxes function by being hydrophobic 
and being able to repel water. So now moving on to triacylglycerols that are also often called triglycerides. So this is a fatty acid triester of glycerol. So you have this glycerol backbone and you have three fatty acid chains. So as I mentioned before, fatty acids make up a lot of other lipids. And triacylglycerols are fats if they are solid at room te temperature. And examples of this are butter, lard, and human fat. But they're in the form of oils if they're liquid at room temperature. And examples of this are coconut oil, olive oil, peanut oil, etc. And their main biological function is energy storage. And actually the hydrolysis of animal fats yields to soaps. And so now I wanted to briefly explain to you guys how soaps work. And I found this super cute cartoon, so I wanted to work with this. And so in this case, it just says, come on, grime, let's get going. The grime doesn't want to go. So the soap comes in, and now they create this micelle structure that can take the dirt away. So how does soap work? Well, the first thing is they have hydrophilic CaO minus groups that attracts, if you look at a water molecule, where it has a delta plus for the hydrogen and a delta minus for the oxygen, it attracts the delta plus of the protons. And then we have nonpolar or the hydrophobic hydrocarbon chain that avoids water. So in this case, this squiggly line is the hydrophobic nonpolar hydrocarbon chain. And this smiling head group is the hydrophilic COO minus group. So now, next step is the nonpolar or the lipophilic hydrocarbon chain attracts the nonpolar dirt. And then from there, it forms my cells, which are spherical aggregates that suspends dirt and water. So this actually ends up looking like this. You have the dirt in the middle, and all of these structures come together to create this globular structure, where all the head groups, which are hydrophilic, want to be facing outside towards the water, but the hydrophobic hydrocarbon tails are facing towards the dirt. And then, number five, these micelles carry the dirt away when the water is removed. So when you wash your hands and you rinse it with water, the micelles are carrying away all the dirt from your hands in these globular structures. Mm -hmm.